The first uh, document we were given by the Congressional Research Service was a 24-page document called The Evolution of Federal Budgeting for us to study as new members. I still have that document, and on day one, after review, I retitled it When Two and Two Cease to Equal Four. So when I look at basic math, and we is, there's a joke within the Marine Corps, math for Marines, it's pretty simple. What is two and two equal? So when I ask the questions that in our limited time here in dialogue, if I ask yes or no, I would appreciate a yes or no answer. There's going to be some questions that you'll be able to expand on, but I would appreciate in the interest of time and, and the constituents who are listening to this hearing. So let's talk about small businesses. Would expanding Medicare payroll taxes increase the tax burden for small businesses? Yes or no? Not under 400000 Okay. Would ending the small business deduction increase the tax burden for small businesses? Anyone make it under 400000 No. Okay. So if, as you said earlier this month, that President Biden would work with Congress to extend the tax cuts for those making below 400000 that was first passed as part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Uh, however, I mean, that was the statement. However, this budget assumes that these provisions will expire as currently scheduled in 2025. So are we telling the folks that after 2025, they're fair game at under 400,000? Mr. Bergman, this is a 2024 budget, but we felt it necessary to put a statement of principles because we know people would be interested. Is they, for that person so in, who's out there, can should they expect that after this, that they're gonna be fair game? No. The budget so, makes clear that the president would support extending tax cuts for those making so, under 400,000. So we're gonna extend them. Uh, is there those a, making under 400,000? Does the president very, have a plan for that and, extention and so black, that the, the people has their starting it, their business or raising their family? Does, it is it is in the budget the, the pre, clearly written that the president supports uh It's one thing to support it's another thing to enact. Well, Good evening friends. So time is running out. The Internal Revenue Service has just announced that there are over $1 billion left for American people to claim. But friends, you will need to take action in order to receive this relief. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video because I'll be going over how you can claim this money. Also, in two days, I will be announcing more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Here is some important news. Taxpayers who haven't filed their tax returns in a few years still have time to claim any refunds that the U.S. government owes them. But that window is closing. According to the Internal Revenue Service, Americans have left nearly $1.5 billion in refunds on the table for the 2019 tax year, with a median refund of about $890. The agency issued a bulletin reminding anyone who hasn't filed their 2019 return to do so by July 17, 2023. The three-year limit by itself is not anything new. But the IRS deadline has extra importance this year because tax year 2019 returns were filed right as a crisis had hit. Expert Adam Brewer told reporters, I suggest the IRS owes money to taxpayers in two groups, those that were so impacted by the crisis that they never filed and those that filed paper returns that were never processed by the IRS. But no matter what side you find yourself on, it is important to file a return by the deadline. IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel said in a recent statement, the 2019 tax returns came due during the crisis 
and many people may have overlooked or forgotten about these refunds. We recommend taxpayers start soon to make sure they don't miss out. The Internal Revenue Service noted that even if people made very little money that year and didn't have any taxes withheld from their paychecks, they may still be owed a refund, such as from the Earned Income Tax Credit. The tax credit for 2019 was available to people earning up to $50,160, depending on how many children they had. This credit is intended for low to moderate income taxpayers. It is worth as low as $560 to up to $6,935, depending on a variety of factors. The $560 credit has an income limit of $16,480 for single filers with no children and $22,160 for married individuals who filed joint returns with no children. Tax credits are noted as credits that directly subtract money from federal income taxes that a taxpayer may owe. Tax credits contrast with tax deductions in the way they operate. Every dollar a taxpayer earns in tax credits is a dollar they save in taxes. Meanwhile, tax deductions lower the amount of taxable income a taxpayer may owe indirectly lowering your tax bill in the process. The agency said that it frequently sees students, part-time workers, and others with little incomes overlook filing a tax return and never realize they may be owed a refund. To be sure, taxpayers who file delayed returns may get more or less money back, depending on whether they owe the government money for other reasons. For individuals behind on their payments, the refund will be applied to any amounts still owed to the IRS or a state tax agency and also may be used to offset unpaid child support or past due federal debts, such as student loans. There are also some other tax agencies you can use to get the most out of your refund. The child tax credit is for families who have children 16 years old and under, and it gives $2,000 for every child who was under 17 by the end of 2022. This $2,000 amount phases out for single tax filers, making $200,000 annually, and for married couples who file joint returns, earning up to $400,000 a year. Taxpayers who have children or other dependents 17 years old or older by the end of 2022 can receive a $500 credit for each dependent. Massachusetts state representatives unveiled their $654 million tax relief plan today with a bevy of measures intended to help the Commonwealth's most vulnerable residents, including overhauling a controversial tax cap law. The House's proposal, echoing Governor Maura Healy's pitch, features a refundable $600 child and dependent tax credit that eliminates the current limit on eligible dependents. The credit would be phased in over three years, meaning that taxpayers could claim $310 per dependent in 2024, $455 per dependent in 2025, $600 per dependent in 2026, and then $614 per dependent in 2027. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Wednesday. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway in a video this coming Friday. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaways, all you have to do, friends, is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.